Hello and good evening. Plenty to come over the next 30 minutes. Yes, we'll hear from the man of the moment, Joe Calzaghi. We managed to catch up with him today after the big fight. But first, for many people in a quiet street in Newport, August the 7th is a night they'll never forget. The night many lost their homes and their possessions after a huge fire spread from a neighbouring workshop. Almost three months on, the rubble remains and people are still homeless and they want to know why. I've been back to Marlborough Road to speak to some of the victims of the fire. They say they face a daily battle with the council and the insurance companies as they try to rebuild not only their homes, but their lives. Well, we spoke to Newport Council. They say the rubble is the responsibility of the homeowners and they're trying to help remove it by speaking to the residents and their insurance companies and this is taking time. Norwich Union are the insurers for the joinery workshop Limebright Limited where the fire broke out and they told us tonight that householders who've suffered should submit claims to their own insurance companies who should be able to help them. For those like Mrs Belmonte who are uninsured, they'd have to prove negligence on the part of Limebright to have a claim against the company's insurance. The Assembly Government has demanded a bonfire of inefficiency as it publishes its spending plans for the next three years. The Finance Minister, Andrew Davis, says he is determined to get a bigger bang for our buck in delivering public services. But local authorities are already warning that this settlement, the toughest since devolution, will put them under intense pressure to put up council tax. Well, our political editor, Betsan Powis, is at the Senate for us tonight. So, Betsan, is it fireworks down there? Well, the budget has certainly caused some sparks to fly, as you can perhaps hear down here in Cardiff Bay. I'm sure it will, Betsan. Thank you very much indeed. A Pakistani-born engineer is claiming racial discrimination after he was not invited for an interview by construction company Amec. Kamal Mohammed Malik from Cardiff told an employment tribunal he believed the company ignored his CV purely because of his foreign-sounding name. Now, should bikers be banned from some Welsh roads? Well, a senior police officer says the idea should be considered after the deaths yesterday in Snowdonia of two motorcyclists. Twelve bikers have died in North Wales this year alone. The police say they'll be taking tough action against reckless riders. Here's Roger Pinney. The thrill of the open road and Snowdonia, it seems, is a magnet for bikers. Well, stay with us on Wales today. There's still plenty to come tonight. You just can't stop taking photos of this glorious autumn we're having, can you? I get my first chance to grill Derek about what the weather's doing. And it's not often our cameras make it to Everest, but they have, with a little help from Mike Peters and friends. Now, it was quite an occasion. In the early hours of yesterday, Joe Calzaghi stepped even further into the annals of sporting history. And I hear you stayed up, didn't you? I was there in spirit. Does that count? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, it had been billed as his biggest challenge yet, a fight against Denmark's Mikkel Kessler. He'd never been beaten. But our man was more than up to it. And now you can hear the cry, arise, Sir Joe. What a night, what a boxer. Joe Calzaghi knew it would be a tough fight against Mikhail Kessler. Quite a night at the Millennium Stadium. Gosh, wasn't it just? Well, let's hear from the man himself. We caught up with him at his Newbridge gym. Oh, amazing, you know, to uh, fight the, probably the biggest fight in my career. <laughs> Great to see Joe in good spirits. Penny Roberts asking the questions then. We've heard tonight that there's to be a major announcement from the Calzaghi camp tomorrow and we'll be the first with that news, of course. Well, many of you have been in touch with the BBC website today about Joe's fantastic achievements. Yes, you have. Hayden Williams from Carmarthen says, Joe Calzaghi is a phenomenal boxer and a fantastic ambassador for Wales. He should win this year's BBC Sports Personality of the Year. He's going to be a strong contender, isn't Absolutely. he? Absolutely. Will from Welshpool, good evening to you. He's been in contact to say Joe deserves every accolade. Everyone in Wales should be incredibly proud of him. He is amazing. Uh, Colin Campbell from Conroy agrees with the calls for Joe to be knighted, describing him as the most outstanding British boxer of all time. And so Joe does have a ring to it, doesn't it? It does. And <laughs> Di Williams gives a mention to Joe's dad, saying that Enzo Calzaghi must be the coach of the year. You can join the debate at bbc.co.uk forward slash Wales News and click on Have Your Say. And the rest of the sports news and confirmation today that Ray Gravel's funeral will be held next Thursday, the 15th of November, at Straddy Park. The, well, from the bottom of the Football League to the top of the world, our cameras have been sent to some strange places over the years. Well, now they've reached new heights. 
on Everest. Yes, we gave one to the rock singer Mike Peters as he performed the world's highest gig just above base camp. The frontman of the alarm from Dessert, Neprostatin, has twice recovered from cancer, so he wanted to raise money for a treatment centre in Nepal. Here's his video diary. This is Mike Peters, the BBC reporter from Nepal. <laughs> Oh, fantastic. Now, I've been looking forward to this moment all through the programme. For the first time ever, I get the chance to introduce the legend that is Derek Brockway. Derek, it's lovely to be on the sofa with you. Welcome to the programme. <laughs> Thank you very much. Did you just call him a legend? A legend. Don't be, so cheeky. Much How do you feel about that? Don't be cheeky. <laughs> You're getting hundreds of photos, aren't you? Autumn photos? I certainly am, yes. I've been absolutely inundated. They're pouring in. I've got four great ones to show you uh, this evening. Take a look at this. Mm. There's the first one there by Lee Pike of Castel Koch. Beautiful, isn't it? Just Lovely. look at those colours. The trees look wonderful, don't they? The next one is from Munt by Daryl Owen. I've never been there, but it looks absolutely wonderful. It's beautiful. Wonderful. It's a lovely beach. Wonderful photograph as well. Uh, the third one is by Aleri Humphreys. Uh, this is a picture of the wonderful village of Ganfloyd near Dolgethlai. Fantastic. Absolutely stunning, aren't you? You've had loads of these photographs as well, have you? I have, yes. And I've got one more to show you. This final picture is from Lucy Kelly. A picture of Ogmore Castle. It's a great spot for going walking, I can tell you. I've been down there myself. As for the outlook, Wednesday, much cloudier. The odd spot of rain or drizzle. Thursday's looking windier with a little rain. But tomorrow, pretty good. Some sunshine for you. Oh, I'm glad to hear it, Derek. Good Thank man. you very much indeed. It's coming up to 7 o'clock. The main headlines from the BBC. The new head of MI5 says British children as young as 15 are being groomed to be terrorists by Al-Qaeda. And people living in Newport who lost their homes following a fire say they're angry that nothing is being done to help them. And that was Wales Today. I'll be back with the news headlines at 10.25. And I do hope you can join me for a new series of X-Ray at 7.30. Looking forward to that. That's <laughs> it from us. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now. Bye-bye.